Do you also love this horizontal image slider that breaks the usual pattern of vertical scrolling? The best part is that it's scroll triggered, so if I scroll back up, it reverses. It just grabs your attention and makes you stop for a moment. In this video, I will show you exactly how I built it from scratch, so you can go ahead and recreate it yourself inside Elementor Editor. This section is actually a part of my all-in-one Elementor template. It's packed with scroll trigger animations and it's made for those who just want to skip the design headache and save time. But for those of you who just want to build this from scratch, let's go inside Elementor and start building. So as you can see here, I have deleted the entire section. We are now at the bottom of my all-in-one Elementor template. So this is the footer and I will go ahead and recreate it here again. So I will click on the plus icon and create a full width container. So full width 100 percentage. And the height is a bit different because we need a lot of space to scroll upon. So you need to set it to 3600. So if I scroll down now, you can see there is a lot of white space. Okay, and the direction should just be down. Then I want you to go inside advanced because we need to give this a CSS class. You will find this link in the description below and here is all the five classes you need and the CSS or sorry the JavaScript code you'll need later. This is by the way totally free. So go ahead and click on the link and copy the first class. I'll insert it here. Okay, now we need to insert a new container inside this container. And did you know that you can just click on the container and go into the widget sections? And here you can just click on any widget and then it will appear inside that container. So for now, you'll just delete this and then let's click on the container and import the new container. So this container needs to be boxed and the width should be 1400 pixels and no gaps. Go into advanced and remove the margin padding and give it 50 and down in the padding you will just give it 150 and down at the bottom 100 pixels. Okay this container also needs to have a CSS class so go back to the code link and copy the next uh, class called sticky section. I'll just insert it here. This container needs to be a little bit different so go down in motion effects and make sure that the sticky option is set to top and this stain column is set to yes. Okay now I want you to right click and find this structure or navigator so you have an overview and as you can see here are all the other sections on the, on the website but the ones we just made are this container and this one. So I need you to name these containers because you will use this for later. We need to make five or six extra containers so it will become very confusing if you don't name them. So the first container is main container and the container we just made is called sticky container. Okay inside sticky container you'll need to add in a new container. So find a new container and insert it here because this will be for our heading and this text. So go ahead and name this container heading. Make this container full width and set it to direction right and set this justify content to end and this to center. All right, click on the container and go into the widgets again and click on a new container. So now we have a container inside the heading container. This will just be called heading and here is our heading. So I'll go ahead and find the heading here and drag it in. And I'll just quickly go ahead and style this. Hold on. Okay, there you go. And inside the final result, we have some text over here and an icon. So I'll just quickly go ahead and take this container and duplicate it and name this text container. And inside that one, we'll just go ahead and drag in our text editor widget like this. And again, I'll just quickly style it. Hold on. And there you go. Okay, so that's our text content. Let's now go ahead and create the container with all the images inside. So this container will be down here. I'll go ahead and find the sticky container and again use my method of just clicking at element and container. So that will make sure that this container is inside this sticky container. 
I actually made a big mistake and this caused me so much time. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working and that was because I have placed this container outside of the uh, sticky container. So it needs to be exactly like this. So you can see if I open the sticky container down here is our heading container and here is our content, which we now will call image container. Okay. So go ahead and make sure it's full width 100% and set the direction to right and set the justified content to start and this one to center. The gap should just be 15 and make sure this wrap is set to no wrap. Then go ahead into advanced because this one needs to have a CSS class. So go ahead and click my code link again and copy the next CSS class, this one. Then I'll go ahead and insert it here. One thing I forgot was to go into layout and make sure that this set is set to overflow hidden. And actually, this also needs to be done on the sticky container and the main container. So our big three containers. So I'll just go ahead and go back to the sticky container, go into layout and make sure this one is set to overflow hidden or else it won't work on mobile. So I will do the same to make container layout, additional options and hidden. Okay, let's go back to our image container because now we need to add the images. So the images are actually containers with a background image. So go ahead and click on the container and add in the new container here and make sure this one is uh, in pixels and it's 500 and the height should just be 400. And now we can give this container a background image. So I'll go ahead and find the first image, which is this one. And we need to do some adjustments because this image is too large right now. So make sure the position is set to center center. And this one should just be default and set it to no repeat. And here you go, the display size needs to be custom. Let's just set this one to 110. And I like to uh, make this background overlay. Uh, this is also something that's on the final result. So let's make it gradient and make sure it's transparent at the top. And then down here, it should just be black. Let's go down into the border radius and give this border radius 50 pixels. Remember that we will copy this image container many times in a moment, so make sure to get all the settings right. Okay, go into advanced and just remove the margin and the padding and then give the margin right just 10 so there is a bit of space between each element. This, this space is just the 10 pixels that I just made. Set it to grow and we also need to give this one a CSS class. So go ahead and go back to the link and copy the next one which is panel. I'll just insert it here and we can also just name this over here panel. Okay, next up, let's go ahead and create some content inside this image so we can go ahead and duplicate it. Because as you can see on the final result, we have this heading, some text and these two who look like buttons. So I'll go ahead and recreate that. So inside this panel, I'll just go ahead and create a container where the content should be inside. So I'll just click the plus icon and container and make sure that this container is full width have a direction of right and space between. Then go into advanced and make sure that we have a padding of 20 pixels. And the position of this should be absolute. And you can just leave these settings as it is. So go ahead and insert um, an image box and remove the image because we won't use that. And I'll just quickly make this left and start styling it. So I'll just skip this part and there you go. Actually, this needs to be at the bottom. So I'll just go into the container again and change this setting to set it to bottom. Now I'll just go ahead and create these two. So let's go ahead and duplicate this container and make sure that this one is at the top and just remove this. I'll just drag in a heading and actually this heading needs to have the last CSS class. So go into advanced and go ahead and copy the last one, just this CSS class called tag and insert it here. All right, let's go into style and make sure that this is white and that it sets to 12 pixels and this font. 
go into advanced again and remove the margin and set the padding to 7 10 and the left should be 10 and the bottom again 7 and you just self align this to end and scroll down to the background and here you just give it a transparent background like this go ahead and go into border and make sure it has a solid border of just one and make sure it's white and the border range should just be 60. okay so now it's time for the fun part where we add the code in and start duplicating these sections so it looks like the final result one quick thing i just want you to do before i just saw this just go ahead and click on this container and make sure that it's set to end so this button is over here so let's go ahead and find panel and start duplicating this five times okay now it's beginning to look like the final result i'll just quickly go ahead and change all the images hold on all right done so now let's go ahead and add in the last thing and that is the code so let's go ahead and find the main container it's important that this code is just inside the main container at the top so again i will just click the main container or you can also find it up here or oh, we can see it so i'll just click it here and then go inside my uh, plus icon and search for the html widget and just click on it okay now it's at the bottom that wasn't meant to be so i'll just drag it here at the top and you can see now it's the first thing in this make container here okay go ahead and go inside the code link one last time and copy this and insert it here okay so let's try and take a look at this i'll just click publish and view it in a new tab and scroll all the way down here at my template i'll just quickly do this so it looks a bit funny because it's at the bottom okay here it is and there you go okay so we need we still need to do some small adjustments but it's beginning to look like the final result i'll just quickly show you how to change this because if your image is too small it would look like it ends here and the round corners won't be visible so let's go back in okay so the image that had the problem was uh the image that we can't see um, maybe i can zoom out there must be a smarter way to do this but here is the image and i will just quickly show you what to do if this happens for you and by the way i will leave all the images in the description below so you can also download these or i'll just leave it here at the at this link okay so click on this container or the panel and here the width just change the width to maybe 150 all right, that's much better. So this is how it looks on mobile right now. So as you can see, we need to do some small adjustments. I'll just go back into the Elementor editor and change to mobile view. And again, we can always change the um, padding or the white space of these. That's not important right now. The important thing is that these needs to look a bit better. And the only reason why it's not looking good is that the panel uh, each panel is too high so just set this to 200 and you need to do this with all panels so i'll quickly do that all right click publish and let's go ahead and refresh okay that's so much better let's go ahead and see how it looks on an ipad okay i think that's all right so one last thing i will just mention that if you need more space here at the top you can just go ahead and find the sticky section and add some content or, or padding here at the top okay i think that was it for this video make sure to watch this video if you want to see my all-in-one scroll trigger template and explore it a bit more thank you